Okay, welcome to your first video on probability. Now you might be thinking to yourself, what is probability actually? And probability is just the chance or the likelihood that something is going to happen. So um, you probably have seen probability a lot in sport, okay? You might be thinking, uh, what are the chances that my team is gonna win the footy this weekend? You will probably notice there's a lot of probability in weather when they say, oh, there's a 40% chance that it's going to rain. Okay, that's a probability. Um, in the lottery, obviously, there is a probability that you might win, but obviously it's very unlikely that you'll win the lottery. And in maybe medicine or genetics, you might say, what's the probability my child will be a boy or a girl? Or what's the probability they'll have blue eyes? And that's going to depend on whatever color eyes the parents have. Okay, so those are just a few examples of where you might see probability. Now we can measure probability uh, numerically, so we can calculate what a probability is, and we usually express that as a fraction, a decimal, or, or a percentage. Okay, we measure probability uh, on a scale from zero to one. Now, if something has a probability of zero, that means it's impossible that it's going to happen. So for example, you might say, ooh, what are the chances that we are not going to have any more maths homework this year. And that's impossible. Okay, you definitely will have more maths homework this year. Sorry about that. But that would be an example of something that is impossible. So it would have a probability of zero. Something that has a probability of one, on the other hand, is something that is certainly going to happen. So you might say, what's the probability the sun is going to come up tomorrow? Well, that's certain. The sun comes up every day. Okay, so that has a probability of one. In the middle, then, we would have things that are, are what we call an even chance, okay? So you might hear the phrase, oh, we've got a 50-50 chance of that happening. Okay, that's, so that's something that's got a probability of a half. So an example of that is if you flip a coin and guess if you get heads or tails, there's only two choices there, heads or tails. So you have a 50% chance of guessing the correct outcome. So that's where you'd have an even chance in probability. Okay, if something is um, between a half and one, then we say it is a likely event to happen. And the closer you are to one, the closer you are to one, the more likely it is that this uh, probability will happen. If something is between zero and a half, then we would say it's an unlikely, uh, it's unlikely it's going to happen. And of course, the closer to zero you are, the more unlikely it is. Now, I did mention that you can express these as a fraction, decimal, or percentage. So I've got them as fractions there. If you have them as a decimal, obviously zero is just zero as a decimal. An even chance would be 0 0.5, and certain is one. Or if you had these as percentages, we would have 0%, 50%, or 100%. Most of the questions we do will probably deal in fractions or decimals. Okay, let's take a look at uh, how a probability, how we calculate probability. So we're going to take a look at just a standard dice here. And what if we wanted to calculate the probability of rolling uh, a certain number? Well, the first thing we would do is we would write it like this. The probability of getting, say, a 6 is equal to... Now, the first thing you have to consider is what are all the possible numbers we can roll on a dice? Well, we can roll a 1 a 2, a 3, a 4, a 5, or a 6. And this, this is called our sample space. Okay, so when we calculate probability, we're going to calculate it as a fraction. The denominator is all the different possible outcomes that you can have. Now, if we want to just roll a 6, a 6 is just one of those outcomes, so the probability of getting a 6 is 1 sixth. Now, what if I wanted, say, the probability of getting an even number? Well, again, I've got six possible outcomes, but this time there are three even numbers. So my probability is 3 6 which I can simplify to a half. So obviously it's more likely that I would roll an even number because there's more even numbers on a dice than just rolling, say, a 6. 
what if I said, what is the probability of getting a five or a six? Now, proper notation for this, instead of using the word or, is to use this symbol. Okay, and that's a union symbol. So really, if you want to be really fancy with your mathematical notation, you would write it like this. Oh, sorry, that should be a six, okay? Probability of getting a five or a six. Now, we can work that out. I mean, you probably know already that, that five or six will give you two six, because there's two numbers, five or six, so two numbers out of six, which simplifies to a third. But if we want a formula for this, if you want to find the probability of one event or another, what you do is you add the two probabilities together. So you take the probability of a five plus getting the probability of a six, and that is one sixth plus one sixth, which is what we got, two sixths. Okay, the last thing we're going to learn is if we want to take the complement. And that is the probably of probability of something not happening. Okay, so I might say to you, what's the probability that I don't roll a four? And the way we write that is a four with a little dash. That means what's the probability I roll anything except for a four? Okay, now there's two ways we can think about this. We can think, okay, my sample space was one, two, three, four, five, or six. So there are five numbers that are not a four. So five, six. Okay, or we could think about the fact that the probability of not getting a four is always going to be one minus the probability of getting a four. Okay, so that would be one minus one sixth, which is again five sixths. Okay, the same way. The general rule for the complement is if the probability of an event is say x, okay, whatever the, the probability is, then the probability of not getting the event is one minus x, okay? Or just the probability of not getting an event is one minus the probability of the event happening. Okay, let's take a look at a second example, see if we can apply what we've learned. So here I have 20 different M&M colors. And if I close my eyes, I wanna see what the probability is of choosing the different colors. So first of all, it's a good idea to know how many of each color I have. So I'm just gonna separate them out. I've got two orange, and I've got one, two, three, four brown ones, three red, four green ones, and then I've got seven blue. Okay, so 20 all together. The first question says, what's the probability that I choose a blue M&M? So there are seven blue M&Ms out of 20 all together. So that means the probability is seven twentieths. The next question says, what's the probability I don't choose a blue? So remember, that's the complement. So in order to work that out, I do one minus whatever the probability was that I chose a blue. So from the question before, I know that's gonna be one minus seven twentieths, which is 13 twentieths. And that makes sense because um, if I take seven away from 20, there are 13 other M&Ms that I choose, could choose, that are not blue. This here, remember this symbol means what's the probability of getting a green or a blue M&M? So we can break that up by adding together the probabilities. So the probability of a green one plus the probability of blue. So the probability of green is four, four twentieths and the probability of blue was 7 twentieths. So all together, my probability is gonna be 11 twentieths. And again, that makes sense because there are 11 M&Ms that are either blue or green. So the probability that I choose one of those two colors is gonna be 11 twentieths. 
Now this says, is it more likely to choose a green or a brown M&M? So let's take a look at their probabilities. The probability of choosing a green one is 4 twentieths. And the probability of choosing a brown one is also 4 twentieths. So is it going to be more likely that you choose green or brown? Well, that was a bit of a trick question because it is equally likely that you will choose either a green or a brown because they have the same probabilities. But if I then went and said, well, what's the probability of getting a red? Is it more likely I'll get a red? There's only three red M&Ms, so the probability is 3 twentieths. So it would be less likely that I would choose a red one rather than a green or a brown.